Yeah, yeah, hold the post <laughs> Good morning. Very good morning, very good afternoon, a very good evening. It's 10.32 in California. Who knows what time it is where you are. Uh, in a second, I'm going to introduce this person, but first I'm going to let you all... I mean, it says it. It says it there. Who you are. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> this is Kim. Kim is the CEO of Kaya, uh, one of the founders. I'm very excited to be sat uh, with her, and we're going to interview her very soon in person. Hey, Real life, in people. Uh, connections. Hold on. We're telling people to join. Good morning, M Pony. Where are you tuning in from? Let us know where you are. We are always excited to hear from you wherever you are in the world. If you haven't already, have you downloaded Kaya? And why not? Uh, good morning. <laughs> you know who that is? It's my mum. Aww. Yeah, we, she always hey, joins. <laughs> so, we, uh, we'll just get started um, because, of course, this will be uploaded afterwards. And normally we would have two screens, but I'm going to do some of this. Some of this. Um, if you have questions, type them in the comments. They're open to questions all the time. Um, you can ask any questions you want. I already asked Kim if there's anything that's off limits, and she said no. Uh, Kim, welcome. Yeah. Uh, how would you introduce yourself to the folks? Oh. Um, okay, I'm Kim. Uh, I am the CEO and one of the co-founders of Kaya. Mm -hmm. um, I love climbing. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, I live in Truckee, California. Um, but right now we are in Pacific Pipe in Oakland, um, which is now the largest climbing gym in the country. Yeah. So uh, pretty, pretty sick. To you be literally here. read my mind. I was like, oh, we need to talk about where we are. Like we're in this little cove, little alcove in the corner. Um, maybe we do like a quick run around at the end, or we'll maybe post something in the stories. It's awesome here. It's absolutely incredible. We've done an amazing job. It's not quite open yet, but we get special access. And um, so let's start with Kaya and your kind of origin story. Yeah. How did you come to Kaya? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, my story about how I came to Kaya really is through the original founding team and original CEO, Austin, who is a really close friend of ours. Austin and I were part of the same climbing crew. We climbed at Mission Cliffs. We climbed at Dog Patch. Like, it's a Bay Area crew. Um, I fell in love with climbing at Mission Cliffs, you know, I call myself like the most average climber on the climbing team. We have folks like the Leah Bonsdales, we have USA Climbing National Team members, we have route setters, we have renowned coaches, and then there's like me. <laughs> and I just like love climbing. <laughs> I'm not that good, but I just love it. And so I, um, you know, I think as a lot of people do, you, you come into a gym, you start finding a community, you start figuring out like how much of yourself you find through your climbing, which is absolutely what happened to me. Um, and you try to see, like, can I make my life work around this, have this more, you have this feeling of not just being in the gym, but also like being outdoors in nature and like embracing everything that like these rocks have to offer us. <laughs> and um, I was, my last job before Kaya, I was working at a company called IDEO, which is a big global design consultancy. And I was coming up around four years ready to uh, look for something new. What was my next chapter going to be? And right around that time, I took a climbing trip with Austin. I was like, about once a year, I, I try to get into sport climbing. <laughs> I usually call Austin and I'm like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so we went out to Red Rocks and he told me all about where the project was at the time, which was him and our other co-founder, Mark. They had just brought together like the original platform, one of the founding engineers Boyko, like all of them were starting to just integrate the climbing gym system with the climber app and you could feel that it was the idea was there um, and as he was describing it I remember we were like driving around Red Rocks you know going to the next crag and I was like maybe this is it <laughs> and so I started like hustling a little bit on the side with them we were starting to work on brands starting to work on design um, kind of bringing more sides to Kaya, which was at the time really engineering focused, really field focused. Um, and then we were able to raise our first fundraising round. And once we raised our first seed round, I was like, okay, let's let's do this. And I jumped ship. Um, I've definitely not looked back since, and it's been a totally incredible ride. Yeah, yeah you've got a chance to look back. It's been like this the whole time, <laughs> running at full pelt. Um, so. 
you know, he came to Kaya from this like incredible design, world leading design company. Um, and you came as chief strategist. And now you're the CEO. Like, what do you bring to Kaya as the leader? Um, what a question. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think I bring to Kaya? I mean, I could go all day. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> What I try to bring is a really, I mean, and I actually think everybody on Kaya brings this, um, is a pretty deep passion for serving the planet community. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that we all have in common is like, we love climbing <laughs> and we love the planet community. And we genuinely believe that there's a potential for a good technology to bring us tighter together as climbers and to actually advance the sport of climbing. And I think that in the last year, um, the depth and the breadth of that mission has come more and more to life. You know, when we started, we were like, Kaya is for logging. <laughs> and it is. Yeah, yeah, right. Kaya is for logging. You, you keep track of your progress, you understand yourself as a climber, you connect with the community on all of that. But we're in a kind of different world now where, um, everyone has responsibilities to not just look at your functionality and the tactical things that you offer, but a broader purpose about why you exist, why you are there to serve the community, and what your vision for that community is. And I think that's a lot of what I try to hold to, um, what I try to carry as an average new climber. And and so real speaking, though, know, yeah. like as a woman, as a person of color, who is not traditionally represented in climbing industry leadership. Mm -hmm. um, I think that those are some of the yeah, things. Are you reading my question? No, I'm not. No, <laughs> I'm no, joking, no, I'm no, joking. No, 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 it's no. in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah go you for know, it. Um, and like a belief that like we can do both things, build some really kick-ass technology that gives the climber an understanding of who they are, but also technology with a purpose to thread the community together and make something bigger than ourselves. So I'm gonna like totally mash up my questions now because you, you mentioned it. But like, how important is it to you, you know, to, to representation wise, you know, to be one of the only female CEOs in the outdoor industry or in the fighting industry, one of the only Asian CEOs in the outdoor or in the fighting industry, certainly in the US. Like, yeah. You know, what does that mean to you? How important is that to you? Yeah, yeah. What does it mean to me is I find it incredibly intimidating. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> No, it is it's just like it's just like climbing once you see someone like you do a problem you're like cool I got it you see someone your height your reach your style your strength and it's easy to model them mm -hmm. and the tough thing about being a minority leader in the industry is that there are not that many people that you get to watch and you're like okay oh, I, I got it it's um, I don't want to I feel like there's, a, there's a classier way to say this but it's a little bit akin to being a first essentialist, where you're like, you have to hold the belief yeah. that you can do it. Um, and, you know, I source that belief from the team. Um, not about me doing it, but about us doing it. And then in terms of what does it mean to me and, like, is it important to me, what's important to me is that I try to leave a legacy for the next generation of people of color, of minority leaders mm -hmm. to see themselves if you can see a little bit of your path through mine or from mine or something like that, then I will be very proud of having tried to do this. Yeah. Um, there's certainly a lot of pressure involved <laughs> in it, but you know the team is amazing at trying to like ground ourselves and not get too wrapped up in the pressure and just stay focused on the mission. Mm -hmm. So you focused on like building, it. like let's just. <laughs> you can say it. You're in charge. <laughs> Let's just build it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and in the process of building it, if we can realize that vision and create a path for the next generation, like that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Have you come up against any roadblocks so far? I mean, you're still fairly new in that CEO role, but yeah. have you experienced anything that you're just like, oh my gosh, if I was a white man, this would be so much easier. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Um, the hardest thing to fight is this feeling of like quote unquote imposter syndrome, right. which you know there's a lot being written about imposter syndrome nowadays and how like we shouldn't use it too much because like what does it really mean? But for me, what it meant was I began to kind of question and have some doubts of like, is this gonna work? Like, can I authentically be myself and also resonate with all of these people? Never because anybody came with any malintent or any prejudice of any kind. And I think generally, especially in this moment, people really want to help you. I found that to be the case pretty much across the board. You know, like everyone in the industry recognizes and embraces that for climbing to grow, for climbing to sustain and be an amazing community, it's going to look different, feel different than it does today. And the warmth that people have towards that enthusiasm and support of like, yes, let's grow climbing. Um, I feel that deeply. Yeah. I feel that deeply from the from the people that I get to operate with. But um, being a minority, you still get in your head a little bit sometimes. You, you know, you question like, what does it mean that I'm the only woman at this table? Yeah, right. What does it mean that I'm, you know, the only person of color at this table and you're having this big discussion around people of color? <laughs> you know, what allyship, what advocacy, what role for me to play when sometimes you're just like I'm just trying to do it myself <laughs> like I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out too you know um, so I think those have been the types of struggles mm -hmm. more so than there's like any outright or latent discrimination or anything like that like I generally believe the climbers that come to work with Kaya are in it because they're here for the right reasons they've got the right values they're the right people to work with you know um, and I think we tend to attract that in our user base, in our partners, you know, like they come to us because they know what we stand for. So that's super important. Um, yeah. Okay. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome. My name is Liam Lonsdale. I'm here with Kim Hang, who's the CEO of Kaya. We are at Pacific Pipeworks in Oakland. It's not open and it's really cool. Uh, and today we're doing a Meet the Founder interview, um, part of the Meet the Founder series, and Kim, of course, is one of our four founders. Um, we are open to questions. You can add as many questions as you want in the comments below. Um, and we are, yeah, psyched to hear from you. Let's talk about the Kai Collective. All right. Um, it's been a project that you and I kind of conceived over a period of time. Something that we talked about really early when we kind of started working together. What's your kind of, I guess like, I'd love to hear what your like thought for founding the Kai Collective. To start. Well, I'm just going to grab my water. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I definitely think that they have been our thoughts. Mm. Our thoughts create. What is the collective about? What is what is the purpose of bringing this crew of people together? Right. Um, and diversity is absolutely representation is absolutely a core part of what we're trying to do with the collective. What we're what we have an opportunity to do in Kaya with open Kaya up and see who's climbing. Who is part of the climbing community? Who is putting down the hard sense and watching it and inspiring us? Um, we have that amazing opportunity as a storytelling platform to actually uh, move the needle on your default perspective of who is a climber. And that is the power, that is part of the power of climbing. So when we um, started seeking out the people that would help us shape the brand, help us shape the community and represent the community. 100% storytelling, representation, and inclusion was a part of that. So we went up, we went after people that we had been following them on Instagram, on Kaya, listening to what they were saying, proud of them about like the way they challenged our thinking. Right. Like, um, I'll just call out Genevieve Walker right. as one of those people, first of all. What's up, Genevieve? <laughs> like, Genevieve Walker blew the climbing industry open with her posts about route names. You know, she proved it. And all of a sudden, there was this cascading effect around how we look at route names, how we challenge what the history of a first ascension is, what the power of a first ascension is, was, and whether it was time to re examine mm -hmm. those relationships. Genevieve was at the top of our list, right? Nate Pierce. Devin Kepi, you know, like these people that shaped our thinking, freaking Albert Oak with his creative energy, you know what I mean? Emma Line and being 
just the most fire <laughs> so energy. Psyched. It's like so so psyched. You know? And then like, even like I think of like the Shauna's, you know, like you're like, well Shauna, you know, she's a white woman, like so what? Like, like what I was so proud of, you know, Shauna's a close friend was like her vulnerability. Yeah. Like her ability to go, yo, know, like publicly, I don't know what's wrong, yeah. but I wanna learn yeah. and I wanna do more to like right. help. Like, right. That for me was such a key factor in yeah. I've been asking her to. Yeah, absolutely. Like the thing about creating change is it's like a collective effort. Right. <laughs> and calling it the Kaya Collective was all about that. It was like, hey, this is more than like a ambassador for us. There was a there's a two way relationship sure. of how do you want to shape this platform, this product, this community, and what can we do to serve that vision? Right. Um, and that, I think, is, is the cornerstone. Right? It's the people that we believe are shaping the future. And we have this like spectacular cross-section. There's you know, crazy, amazing athletes who have just accomplished everything you can accomplish in line with right. you know, commentators, creators, and then want to shout out to our coaching segment mm. in the Kaya Collective. You know, what we did is we went out and we picked the coaches who not only bring it in terms of their expertise and absolute badassery of being like top coaches, super qualified, right. deeply empathetic, community driven coaches who are here to help us shape how Kaya helps you become a better climber, mm -hmm. which is an all what Kaya Premium launching this fall will be about is how Kaya helps you become a better climber. The data that you put in, playing back your insights, your performance, how tracking actually shapes you to be a better athlete, that's a huge reason why we brought in uh, the coaching segment to help and shape that. Yeah, the coaches is such a, like, again, such an amazing coach, like Mario Stanley, he's coached more, he reckons, like, just from the numbers that he's given, I believe that he's probably coached more, than, more people than anyone, ever. It seems like it. It's like thousands and thousands of kids. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, Black Thunder on oh Kaya, gosh, on Black, Kaya. Thunder. Black underscore Thunder, if you want to get thinking. Mario was someone that just kept coming up. Like everyone was like, "Have you talked to Mario? Have you talked to Mario Stanley? You need to get talked to Mario Stanley." So finally, we made that connection, and it, that's really how the collective came together. Right. We we put feelers out, and a lot of people came hard with recommendations of who should be part of that vision, um, and we went after them, and, and now have this spectacular team of people that we couldn't be prouder to work with. Yeah, I totally agree. What about the the future of the Kaya collective? Like what? Do you have a vision for what it might look like in the future? Mm. You know, right now we've got 14 you know, incredible folks. Like, what, where does it look next year? What, you know, in, in, obviously, we're not going to hold you to this, but like, <laughs> uh, what does it look in five years? You know, yeah. what is the Kaya Collective? That's a, well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, to me, the Kaya Collective, the big work is pulling this creative group of people together. And that the vision of where it goes in five years, that's something that I can't really wait to get the Kaya collective together and ask them to yeah. shape where do you want this to be in five years. Sure. So like thank goodness for vaccinations <laughs> and then like for being in real life with people. I think for us it's like we invest in people and then from there the people will shape the vision. Right. Um, now of course we have desires of like and thoughts about where the collective will go, but the point of it being a collective is that it's co they shape it together, and so that's a question that I'd like for you to no. ask every IG live yeah, right. the Kaya Collective. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Every Thursday. <laughs> every Thursday we have our uh, Kaya Collective live sessions. Yesterday was online wine. You can watch the replay on our Instagram feed. We've had Albert Oak, we've had Nicholas Milburn, and we've had Abby Wright, all of them are live on YouTube and Instagram if you want to watch the replays. Um, someone asked a question actually, it was Eric, I believe. Yes, Eric Sethna says, how big is the product and development team at Kaya? Tiny! So small. We're so small. Like nobody's above 5'2", it's crazy. <laughs> oh, that's not what you meant. <laughs> Good one, Liam. Liam's a jack, so he's got a lot of <laughs> um, We have three uh, full-time engineers. Um, shout outs to Brian Boyko, John Steck, and Jen DeBellis. And they're led by our head of engineering, Mark Bourguignon, um, who is a amazing talent, one of our co-founders, one of our OG founders, um, spectacular person that anybody needs is just like, love Mark. <laughs> so 
good. And like total beast. Yeah. Uh, so that's the Edge team on development. And then the product team is led by David Herman. Actually, you all have probably met Mark and Dave yeah. in a previous IG Live. If you haven't watched that IG Live, you should watch it because it's freaking awesome. Um, and then we have an amazing design team led by uh, Jared Bell, who's our head of product design, and May Kodama, who's our visual designer. And so they make all the magic in the product, the visuals, the celebration, the cool stuff that you see on Instagram. Um, all of that is coming from our design squad. Yeah, it was cool. Last night, if you were at Dog Patch, and May was there, and I was like showing people things in the app and like different graphics, and so I was like, she did that. That is so like the stuff that they're doing as a team is, is incredible. Um, just to remind you, you can ask any questions. I think we only have that one from Eric. Um, what's your vision for Kaya in the future? You know, obviously, we talked about the collective, uh, the Kaya collective, and I feel like you probably will answer it very similarly. Like, you know, in like the, you probably give the company like the grants to shape it, but you know, I feel like you have to have some vision. I do. <laughs> Otherwise, we're screwed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's shared vision. You know, like it's not like, oh yeah, well that, like, yeah, like yeah, right. you know, like this, this is definitely something that we shape uh, every day, we live every day. Um, but where I see Kaya is in the context of kind of the state of the climbing industry. Um, my like personal mission vision for Kaya is that. It's a community that helps you. It's a community and a platform that helps you deepen your love for climbing. Um, the reason that we I frame it that way is, you know, if you come to a climbing gym for the first time or go outdoors for the first time, then you're going to start to find immediate value in climbing. <laughs> Discovering the next climb for you, figuring out what's the next project that keeps you inspired, keeps you training, keeps you coming back. Um, fueling that love for climbing, whether it's through finding your progression, Kaya Premium helping you become a better climber, connecting to the community, all of that is stuff that's like, do you love climbing? And oftentimes I feel like, especially with climbers, you know, like, if you ask someone, for example, how's your climbing going? It's kind of a proxy for like, how's your life going? <laughs> <laughs> You'll know like, oh, I haven't been climbing much, it's like, code, like, I've been freaking busy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not finding my space, my time for myself um, to, to get what I need. And so if we can deepen your love for climbing, deepen your, your relationship with climbing, I often feel like that's like deepening your relationship with your health, with your life, with your community. Um, and that's the that's the vision of Kaya in my, in my perspective. In terms of the vision of like where it goes, you know, climbing is, um, climbing is like a baby. It is where it is now versus where it's going to be as we hit the Olympics, as we come to be like a mainstream sport, which I think, um, you know, you imagine like climbing youth teams like AWA and some teams, you know, um, imagining that the future of our sport is going to be much bigger, much greater, much more inclusive than it is today, kind of being the connective tissue that brings all of them together. Mm -hmm. um, and then the data side, like let's get on the data thing for a second. <laughs> you know, when you look at other sports, um, cycling, running, um, other even weight-based, uh, power-based sports, the maturity of the sports to understand the data inputs and the outputs to actually become a better athlete, climbing is just at its beginning stages. And part of that is because there's never actually been a good technology that enables that. And Kaya's really trying to solve that problem. If you actually are able to harness all of that data to figure out how you train climbers to become better climbers, that's the vision that we're bringing to life, in particular with Kaya mm -hmm. and that offer coming this fall. <laughs> heard it here first, or maybe second, but definitely heard it. Yeah, to shape you, to leverage the data, to help you become a better climber, to figure out what the right climb is for you. Like, imagine going to Red Rocks for the first time and asking yourself that age old question of, like, what do I get on? <laughs> Not easy, as in the, it, it's simple, but for you as a user, bam, it's right there in the for you section. <laughs> Our recommended clients for you, your grade range, your height, your friends, your climbers that you follow, all of that is served right up to you. And it's that kind of closing the gap of that experience and that, that I think we're super excited to do that. That's a good answer. 
So look at all those love hearts coming. Um, so much love. Um, I want to talk about controversy. Okay. Um, I have been aware, and I think like climbing in general, of people that have kind of naysayers around technology. Mm. And like, what do you say to people that are like, climbing and technology don't mix? Like, I don't want, I don't want to track. I don't want people tracking my climbing. I want to go climbing, and that's that. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing I'll say is, like, there's a part of me that understands that. You know what I mean? Like, climbing is a, um, there's a purity to it. The flow state that you get in, the, um, that's what we all chase. That feeling of freedom. And that freedom is sometimes a way from technology, you know? So, like, I get that. Um, and I think, actually, most of us on Team Kaya, we get that. You know, when we fell in love with climbing, it wasn't because of our phones. And that's generally not why people fall in love with climbing but to help them deepen mm-hmm. their climbing, to take it to the next level, to find that progression, to, to, to deepen their connection to the community. If Kai is getting in the way of that, then that's an issue for us because what we want to do is deepen your love for climbing. For where technology can fit in, I would say like, you know, technology has played a massive role in the advancement of climbing mm-hmm. forever. Whether it's been the introduction of physical technology, like aid climbing, <laughs> anchors, rubber shoes, rubber shoes <laughs> climbing gyms, you know what I mean? Like technology advances where the sport is going. Now having a purpose to that technology is critical. Having a consciousness around that technology and the positive or negative effects that it's having to your relationship, that's so important. Mm. But do we hear from our users that they get in there and they see the beta for their gym, they get the push notification and they're like, I gotta go in? And that brings them closer to climbing. That's what we're saying. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're like at home and you're like, okay, can't wait for my next trip to Tahoe. What should I do? <laughs> you know, and build your psych and really the stoke. That's where we want Kaya to play. Not to interrupt your relationship in that moment with the rock, which we support and respect and be like revere. <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah. Love that. You just see, I don't think any more questions are coming, but that was a great answer. All these lovely people have joined. Uh, if you do have any questions, we'll be wrapping up relatively soon, but we still have time for some questions. You can drop them in the comments. Thank you to Eric, that already dropped one in. Um, of course, you can DM us as well. You can DM Kim directly or us on Kaya, and we will always respond if you have questions that you don't want to ask. People get shy. They really do. Love those love hearts coming in, though. Um, let me see. Let's talk about you as a climber. Um, I mean, it's funny because you started climbing at root climbing gym. Oh, yeah. But you're not even a sport climber. You sport no. climb once a year. No, 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 no. I started climbing. Okay, so actually my starting of climbing happened a bit earlier. Okay. I really, like, became obsessed with climbing at Mission Cliffs. But I got introduced to climbing um, by Dan Bell, um, who is, like, a prolific, amazing climber based in San Diego, spent a lot of time in Bishop. He and I lived in the same, like, freshman dorm at UC San Diego, and my friend got locked out of her dorm room, and Dan, like, scaled the side of the building to, like, (laughs) break into her room, and I was like, this is sick, (laughs) which is the cheesiest story about how I got to climbing, but it's, like, kind of the original. I saw that on the website. Um, No, it's not going on the website. (laughs) Uh, So me and my my partner Hamish and our friends, um, we started then climbing at Vertical Bowl Gym in San Diego, which is about to come on to Kaya. Um, our first like outdoor climbing was up the Santee boulders in San Diego and then I took a bit of a hiatus from it. I went, I was traveling, I went to grad school in Chicago, there was no gym around me, before all of the Chicago gyms were a thing. Um, and then when I moved back to the Bay Area is when I started getting into climbing again. Um, moved back to San Francisco and I was just kind of going through a bit of a rough spot with my just like climbing career or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I like made a New Year's resolution of like, yo, you gotta do something. You need to do something. And my New Year's resolution was to sign up for a membership at Mission Cliffs. No um, and then I just haven't really looked back. You know, um, I found so much community there. In that, if you know Mission Cliffs as a gym, it's like 20 feet <laughs> bouldering. It's tiny. And the thing about it is like, yes, you're falling. It's about this big. It's about, it's about this big. It's about this big. And the uh, okay, the terrible parts of it are that you're bound to fall on someone mm-hmm. if you aren't freaking careful. But the amazing parts about being in a climbing gym community that's literally this radius is like you know everybody. Right. You 
just get to know each other real good, you know? Like, you, you can't show up at the gym and not run into somebody. Whether you like it or not. Whether you like it or not, you know? And um, it was amazing because last night when we were at Dog Patch, that crew came out. <laughs> you know, um, it's called the Team Try Hard Crew, which is pretty much the name of like a million little climbing crews across the country and the world. But uh, that crew, including Austin, including John Steck, including, you know, our, a lot of our crew at Kaya, um, they're the people that I really fell in love with climbing. And um, I think that's just true for a lot of people. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, if you, you find yourself through other climbers, you love love spending your evenings or your weekends or just like trying hard shit with other cool people watching them try things being inspired you know like that feeling of like cheering somebody up through and vice versa like it's just some magic in all of those interactions there's something very special about walking into a gym or a crowd and being like everybody's got your back Everybody wants you to send. Everybody wants to help you figure out your beta. Now some people will help you better than others, <laughs> you know, but that feeling of like here for you, stoked for you, which is the core of the Kaya brand and community and value prop, um, it's just super cool. It's really special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have any ambitions with your climbing? Mm, I want to become a sport climber one day. <laughs> You need to let us to tie it off first. <laughs> remember, I know, but I gotta remember. No, but I mean, okay, so you wanna do sport climbing? No, I only group? have one route. I only have one route that I wanna do. That climb. one that we saw? That one that we saw oh, of in Donner Summit. It's called Too Short, Too. too something like that. Two Pots of Fail. No. No, that's not what it's called? I'll find it on Kaya. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that's what it was here. called. It's like Too Short to something. It's like a 512A. It's basically just like boulder pop up over the route. Yeah. And my friend Tarumi sent it recently. Oh, nice. Um, Emmeline sent it recently. Really? Yeah, it's a super, it's a beautiful. You should have gone the same train. I know, I wasn't in town when they were all crushing. Uh, but yeah, so I have like these like somewhat aspirations that have just lived at the aspiration level to one day do sport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, right now, in terms of my bouldering, which is actually what I'm training for, so I'm working with a coach, Natasha Barnes. Shout out to Natasha Barnes. Kaya Collective, um, and she is helping me come out of my injuries. I had two slap tears, aka like every climber on the face of the earth. Um, Natasha has helped me feel strong in my shoulders again, the way like I just haven't in years. It's, it's spectacular. Um, and then I have some projects that I'm trying to take down. I don't want to jinx them, <laughs> but I have some stuff that I'm like, I hope this season will go. Yeah. Um, what about like long term? You know, I feel like as a climber, certainly when I like really got into it, I was like, okay, I want to climb this grade, yeah. and then I want to climb this, or like yeah. I want to climb this iconic route, right. and that is X bar, or whatever. Right. I need to be able to do all of these things. Yeah, to do, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay, so I definitely would love to um, feel like I'm actually rushing double digits consistently. And there will be some cool stuff coming in Kaya Premium around, <laughs> oh or around It's relentless. <laughs> <laughs> around how to actually master different levels, right. like benchmark grades, yeah. you know, benchmark climbs yeah, with yeah, grades. Yeah, for sure. um, but you know the way I feel about my climbing goals is like climbing is like my time to feel connected to myself and to my people. Mm. And when I am doing that, it's less about the grade and it's more about my experience when I'm climbing and when I feel strong and I go out there and I feel like I'm trying hard and I am making progress yeah. that's when I'm happiest with my climbing yeah. so it is on it, like maybe I don't have a big enough vision for myself but like my time with my climbing it's like do I feel like I am my best yeah. you know am I clear am I happy am I giving it my best um, that's when I feel like I'm crushing <laughs> yeah, it's so interesting you say that because certainly for, like for me, having deliberately taken this like year off climbing mm. or year off climbing every day, mm. seriously, training, not training, like whatever, it's definitely like giving me the set, giving me that like love of climbing. Mm. I feel like you know I was climbing so much on my own a lot as well. You, know, you just kind of, it's really hard to 
find the side because yeah. you don't necessarily always make fun of us. Yeah. If you not got a crew with you, yeah. you know, I like I definitely lost some side. Yeah. And taking that year off, like you know, coming up the trucky and having those sessions, yeah, 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 yeah. or even just last night and doing like I think I did like six. Months. But it was just so good to like yeah. move and like yeah, totally. like it, you know, I was still obsessed about climbing during yeah. that time. Right. I just didn't do it. Yeah. And um, yeah, it got me so fired up. That's so, like, good. so hungry. I get it. That's so good to feel. That's so good to hear. Like, yeah. that's the thing about climbing. Like, everybody knows, um, I mean, yourself the most, you know, when you're loving your climbing. And, um, that's all the time yeah. <laughs> You know, like, is it about the grade? Is it about the difficulty? Whatever. It's more about the experience for sure. I mean, um, Love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. There was another question came in while we were talking. It came in. Oh, that was the wrong button. It came in. No, also the wrong button. Press the right one. Came in from Crystal the Rose. Oh, How did Crystal. the name Kaya come about? Is it part of the founder's culture? Oh, yes. Thank you for asking, Crystal. Um, I didn't ask that question because I feel like at this point, like, I've asked it or written it so many times. Did but you it? It's a good one yeah. to yeah. ask. Yeah. An answer. So, um, so the name Kaya comes from a Filipino phrase, Kaya Mo, which my mom told me all the time when I was growing up. So, like, Sige, Kaya Mo means, like, you can't go ahead you can um and it's like a feeling it's so very similar to like venga ale come on you know like sometimes we're like should we just name the company like come on <laughs> like no <laughs> but that's the vibe you know what i mean like that's that magic stuff yeah. that we're talking about that like so unique to climbing of like that cheer that gets you from one move to the next yeah. um and it, it comes certainly from my culture i strongly identify as filipina i'm filipina chinese American. Um, my family is from, my parents are from the Philippines, and you know, we grew up speaking Filipino in the household, and to be able to name Kaya um, from a Filipino phrase is something I'm super proud of, you know, like, and it's like a lot of people don't know, a lot of people don't know that well, that's where it's coming from, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm so proud to represent I think that's kind of like the secret sauce though, you know, like most people won't know that Strava is Swedish for strike no. or, you know, like, insert, what well, that Nike is the yeah. goddess of war or speed mm-hmm. or whatever she was goddess of. You know, there's like so many brands that have these like, not hidden meanings, but meanings that you like don't know automatically. Yeah, right, right. And I feel like that's kind of cool. That is cool. When you go that bit deeper, when you find that affinity for the brand, you're like, yeah. Huh. Right. And right. if you don't, you're like, Kaya, that's a nice sounding word. Totally. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the other thing. It's like, it sounded pretty yeah, it you sounds know, awesome. <laughs> yeah. There was a moment when we were going to name our daughter, and we were like thinking of names, and then we both were like, Kaya's such a pretty name. We were like, oh yeah, Kaya. Yeah. And then there was like, wait, no, we can't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then, Kaya, Kaya's a nice name. When we, um, we looked at many different names. Right. We obviously explored many different names, but to get to name it something from another culture that other people about what is the emotional vibrance yeah. of the world really um, really cool. And it's such a great sentiment, you know, like the the kind of one more move. Mm-hmm. You know, if you ever go to a crag in Spain, especially in like Catalonia, like in that venga, mm-hmm. like venga is like when your elbows are so high that like <laughs> nothing can work, you know, you're like, you're yeah. falling off, yeah. but they like the noise just like makes you do that one more move, you know, yeah. makes you do that one more move. Yeah. That sentiment of like, Kaya Mo, like, mm. don't let go, like just one yeah. more, yeah. and then send in. Totally. It's like such an amazing feeling. Totally. Like, what a sick name. Yeah, and then the thing like, I love these like little moments of like, when the Kaya crew gets together and we climb together, people will shout it, like, Kaya, Kaya, Kaya. Yeah. you know? And like, it just, it feels like, this is like little magic that I have that like, we're finding that culture represents so good um, we're pretty much going up on time um, Kim thank you so much for joining thank you so much yeah, fun uh, you can follow Kim on Kaya at Kimbo named after that famous street fighter Kimbo Slice yeah. because Kim is a, also a better street fighter um, you can find me on Hi, Kaya at <laughs> Liam Lonsdale <laughs> big thank you to Touched On Climbing to Pacific Pipe Pacific Pipe works Pacific Pipe. Pacific Pipe, which is where we are right now. Um, I'm going to do a little time lapse before I leave and post that uh, in Kaya's stories because it's fucking cool. This gym is like 
insane. Um, thank you so much to everybody that asked a question, everybody that joined us. It's been a pleasure. Uh, we still have one more Meet the Founder to do, and it's going to get hella nerdy. Because oh, yeah. if one thing that Austin does well <laughs> is get nerdy on data. Uh, that will be coming at some point in the near future. Don't forget, every Thursday we have Kaya Collective live. This is Kim. I'm Liam. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And...